Continuing on first John. He that loveth not knoweth not God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Okay, sorry. Sometimes the King's English just throws me off. I'm I guess I'm in a little bit of a brain fog here. Let's get it, let's get woke up here. And this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son. In other words, God came in the flesh to us. Now, remember, all of this is very cryptic. The word of God is one gigantic cryptic message. It is only understood spiritually. That's 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. You cannot break down and understand this Word of God unless the Holy Spirit hands it to you on a silver platter. It's grace. It's given to you. It's not from hard work. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son to the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. Yes. What has to happen first? We have to love God or God has to love us. The biggest no-brainer in the history of all things Bible. God has to love you first. There's no free will, for he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. That's grace. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, move right over to the next chapter. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. They never give you verse 10. They just rattle off 8 and 9. Verse 10. Is it... Ephesians 2.10 is one of the biggest election predestination, no free will Bible verses in all of the word of God. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto the good works, which God hath before ordained we would walk in them. We're his workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus to do the good works. God have before ordained that we would do so. Before ordained when? Previous chapter, for he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. Free will is a satanic doctrine. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. And sheep will. Eventually, once they get the call from the Holy Spirit. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Remember, all of this is instruction. It's not free will decision it's the illusion of free will decisions but it's nothing more than instruction for sheep that sheep will of course comply with eventually before they die hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit that's right he gives us his spirit you're baptized by the holy spirit If Saul, who later became Paul and wrote all the epistles, if he had never gotten called by Jesus on the road to Damascus, he would have stayed Saul, never wrote an epistle, and continued to kill sheep. As he held the garments during the stoning of Stephen. You must get the call. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, which is God coming in the flesh himself. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath 
to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Let's move on to Daniel. When you have the comforter, you don't have fear. That's why the Holy Spirit is called the comforter. You get comfort in the truth and the fear goes away. Back to Nebuchadnezzar's second dream, which is about him. And how God took him and flattened him out and made him a beast for seven years. Very embarrassing, very humbling. And then humbled, he came back and praised God. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, that they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, that they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to him whomsoever he will. This is all about the will of God. God has declared the end from the beginning, from ancient times to the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. I will do my pleasure. God's declared everything. He's a sovereign God. We're all living in his movie, his story. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Not man's free will decisions or man's hard work or man's genetic code brings him greatness. No. Everything you have was ordained by God. Everything you don't have was ordained by God. Wherefore, O king, let thy counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be lengthening of thy tranquility. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked into the palace. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar ignored him. He was like, all right, thanks, Daniel. Appreciate it. Great, great, great call. He went on about his business. So at the end of a 12-month period, it's stating here that he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, remember, Nebuchadnezzar was writing this, so he's speaking about himself now in the third person. Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The king departed from him. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as ox, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Get to the rest tomorrow. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.